The official title is Software System Design and Implementation, but all the students call it the games class. And you'll see why in a second. So uh, this course is rather unique in the courses we teach here uh, in the CSC department at UCSD. Uh, it's a single project, and it's very self-motivated by the students, and it's targeted for graduating seniors. And the students work in large groups, five to six uh, students working together, and the project is so large that it can't be done by just one person. And as a result, the students have to learn how to cooperate with each other and coordinate with each other and get along. Uh, which is a fun lesson to learn. And um, in the process of, of doing their project, they use a huge number of tools. Uh, so rather than developing everything from scratch, uh, they try to take advantage of, of all the tools out there to sort of uh, build the best project they can in the end. And then finally, we, we set a pretty high bar for what it is we want to achieve in the course. Um, so that the, the project is the, has the stringent demands of the real-time system, it's distributed, it works over the network, and it has to be very interactive and have um, high use of 3D. And then finally, um, I also want the students to have a lot of fun in the course. And they work really, really hard. But at the same time, I do think they have a lot of fun. Now, from my perspective, as, a, as the instructor of the course, um, it's relatively simple for me to run. There's just one assignment. <laughs> Implement a distributed real-time network 3D game. I hand it out on the first day, and I tell them, well, this is due on the last day. <laughs> and today is the last day. This is when everything is due. And then I step back and say, good luck. Let's see what happens. So the project is a game. And, uh, but it's easy to forget that the games are actually very challenging software systems, applications to design and build. Um, so from my perspective, you know, the research that I do is in uh, dealing with large, complex systems. And so from my perspective, by having them work on a game, they're, they're learning how to design and implement a large complex software system, which will benefit them no matter what they do going forward. And there are many challenges in working on a game. It's distributed, so you have multiple players running over a network. It's real time. You need these very high frame rates to, make, uh, to give the illusion of, of interaction. And it's very complex. There are all these things that are, that are working together, 3D graphics, networks, asynchrony, threading, sound, animation modeling, all that fun stuff. Um, but the great thing about a game and having a game be the project is that it's also a lot of fun. And uh, this is a course that, that I wish I could have taken when I was in college. Um, and they didn't have anything like this. So I'm just doing the next best thing, which is to teach it. So how does this course work? Well, here's a, a brief overview of the quarter. We start with a little bit of history and introduction and overview and goals in the first week and a half. And then uh, the students start getting jump-started on the design of the, the games that they want to build. We have some group meetings. We interact on the design, the features, the, the story, and the idea behind the game. And the students go off and build, or excuse me, write a design document, um, some specifications, an implementation schedule, and a set of milestones. And then the bulk of the quarter, of course, is spent on implementation. And what we do throughout the, the rest of the time is that uh, each group has a weekly group meeting with, with me and the teaching assistant. And uh, the students write uh, group and individual status reports, talking about what it is they accomplished, what it is they were supposed to accomplish, what was left, and why they didn't accomplish it. And then we go over problems that we're having, troubleshoot, and talk about uh, what we need to achieve uh, in the following week. And all of, this, um, all of these status reports are documented on the web, on the group web pages. And everything is open. If you're curious afterwards to take a look and see how they look, um, it's very interesting because these status reports essentially form a diary for all of the groups and all the students throughout the quarter of all the experiences they went through. And if you sort of go through the status reports, um, you know, from my perspective as the instructor, you get to learn a little bit more about the students outside just their technical skills. Let me give you a few examples. So early on. <laughs> It's up on the web, so it's fair game. <laughs> so early on, you get, you get a, a taste for what the students are like and what they're interested in. <laughs> and of course, the students, they work really hard, um, night and day. And you know sometimes, they can become a little bit forgetful. <laughs> 
If you've ever had that experience, it is incredibly frustrating. And then finally, there was, um, there was an unfortunate circumstance this quarter. Um, you know, I woke up one morning just before uh, some meetings, and uh, I read this in the, in the status report for one of the groups. Uh, so it turned out that... <laughs> You know, you, over time, you get a number of different emails about how, you know, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> this one takes the cake. <laughs> so unfortunately, um, uh, you know, for two of the students in the class, their apartment did burn down. Uh, it was an unfortunate accident. Fortunately, uh, nobody was harmed in the process. And what's really amazing is that even after losing their apartment and everything in it, uh, the students were able to get back on track and produce an amazing game by the end of the quarter. It was truly incredible. Okay, um, and one of the things that I, that I want to emphasize is that in, in everything that you're going to see when the students demo their games, it's the students themselves who made their project successful. They're the ones who make this class successful. The project ideas for the games are entirely own. And they literally solved all the hard problems themselves, dealing with this uh, very complex software environment, all these different things uh, that they have to use and combine and get to run together, um, tools that they've never used before and they have to become experts in a very short amount of time. And then, of course, um, no software is bug-free, so they have to learn what these bugs are and how to work around them. And so, um, to, for me, what I, what I really want to emphasize is that the projects that you're going to see reflect the outstanding independence personal initiative, and amazing problem-solving skills of the students in the class. Uh, it's, you can think of it as sort of the culmination of the CC curriculum and, and a major personal achievement for all the students. It's just always incredibly impressive for me to watch for, uh, every time I teach the course what the students are able to accomplish. And so what I'm going to do now is just give you a brief glimpse of what that process was of going through the quarter. So we're at week one. It's the beginning. Enthusiasm and optimism runs really high. After all, we have 10 weeks. How hard could it be? You know, it, they've played the games. They've played games before. They know how this stuff should work. And it's just a matter of sitting down and coding things up. Right? Well, you know, around fourth or fifth week, we get to the stage of integration where everybody that's been working on things independently, they have to suddenly glue these things together into a network distributed game. And that's when the lab really starts to fill up because that's where all the hard problems start to surface. And by the way, um, the lab is food free, so any food you see in the pictures is just an illusion. <laughs> and then at around week eight, something incredibly magical happens. So if you go back to the web site to the groups and you look at their design notes, you'll see the um, uh, sort of drawings that the students have done at the, the very beginning of class. And this is sort of as they're working through the process of trying to envision what their game is going to look like. Right, so this is about, uh, you know, these drawings from are from week one. And then in about seven weeks, these drawings suddenly transform into things that look like this. It is truly an amazing process to watch. It is incredible. And then, of course, becomes 10th week. It's the final crunch. Suddenly the quarter is over and it's today, the demos are here, and everybody's going crazy. All right, so, you know, most of the students in the class stayed up all night. And then they start drawing, you know, funny pictures on the whiteboard. <laughs> now you may wonder, you know, so, you know, as, as the instructor for the class, what is it that I do? Well, <laughs> in the past it's been traditional for me to, to go off on, um, you know, so on trips that are required by work. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's not my fault that I have to go to visit these places. This is, you know, conferences that I have to attend. So there's one year, you know, I went to Italy. That was, that was tough. And then Shanghai, that, that was really tough. And then Hawaii, another year. And that was, that was probably the worst of them all. <laughs> so the students are, you know, slaving away in the lab. And, and I have to suffer with all this travel. This year, though, I'm happy to report that um, I didn't take any, any big trips. I just sort of stayed locally, you know, went uh, sailing around the bay and, you know, maybe I did a little bit of surfing too, you know, 
just trying to help out the, the morale. All right, um, before I wrap up, uh, I just want to acknowledge a number of people who uh, really helped make this class successful. So Joe Lunsford and Sally Witucki uh, from Academic Computing Services, they're the ones who got all of the software installed and all the accounts installed and, and getting the lab set up so the students um, who have very specialized needs for, for this class can actually get their work done. And then Helena Bristow and Todd Margolis and Carolyn Staggs and Hector Bracco from um, CRCA and Cal IT2 really helped us out in supporting us, uh, particularly for this final demo event. So we're here uh, very much to their help. And then finally, um, Bob Mitchell from Sony Online and Wolfgang Engel from Rockstar San Diego and Steve Rotenberg from Pixel Active. Um, they all, yeah. Um, uh, they took time out of their busy schedules to come and give guest lectures to the class, and they were all fantastic. And uh, I really appreciate your taking the time out to, to uh, talk to the students about uh, gaming and the game industry and, and what you can do going forward. And then finally, Mark Hayes from Microsoft and, of course, Steve Rotenberg. Um, these guys have been supporters of, of the class from the very beginning, and they continue. Mark Hayes, in particular, is the one who always finds a way in which to uh, give free software to all the students. Um, of course, that's so that they can develop at home on their desktops and laptops, but you know, that's okay. And then finally, I really want to give a special thanks to uh, Kristen Koch. Kristen's up front. <laughs> Kristen, please. Uh, Kristen is really the one who answered all the hard questions from the students. Um, you know, what do I do? I just organize stuff. So um, yeah, she was very, very helpful for the class, and the class, uh, the students wouldn't have been able to do what, they, what they've done uh, without her. So it's really great to have Kristen be the TA. Okay. I'll let you guys uh, start getting started. So what's the, what's, come on. All right, so what are we going to do? All right, I'm going to stop talking. And uh, we're going to move over, move on to the games. We have four groups. We're going de to demo um, four different games: Whoa, Icarus, Super Hurt Ball, and Tetris Siege. And uh, what each group is going to do is they're going to give an introduction to the members of the group, uh, talk about the concept of the game, and then uh, do a demo of each of the games. And the demo is going to have audience participation. So each of the groups is going to ask for uh, some of you in the audience to come up and be guinea pigs to, to play the game. All right, so we're going to get started with, uh, with group one. <laughs> 